Welcome to a Wiser Retirement Podcast. Before we get started with the episode, I want to tell you about a new ebook available on our website called Buyer Beware. Why do they keep trying to sell you that annuity? This ebook covers the various types of annuities, negatives to owning annuities, and better investment alternatives to annuities. To download this ebook, you can click the link in the episode notes or go to wiserinvestor.com and you'll find it at the bottom of the page. Now on to today's episode. Welcome to a Wiser Retirement Podcast, where we believe the best financial advice should always be conflict-free. I'm your host, Casey Smith, guiding you to financial freedom today are my co-hosts, Missy Beach and Michaela Laney. Hello. Hey, hey, Casey. So today we're going to answer the question, how much money do you need for retirement? This is a loaded uh Loaded question. You're looking at me funny, Missy. Yeah. Are we going to answer that, Casey? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can work out a formula because, you know, here's here's the thing um, is that this is not something that any person can answer. So if you're watching uh, Susie Orman or anybody else, Dave Ramsey, anybody else that's sitting there talking to the masses and they're saying, you need to have X amount for retirement, tune in. Um, there is no number for the masses. There's only, there's no formula. There's no 65% of what you made or 75% of what you made before. Um, it's, it's really comes down to each individual family. Exactly. And you know, there's those other calculators that'll say, Oh, you need 10 X of what your current salary is at right. this age or 15 X at this next milestone age. And, I think like, well, how would they even know that? Because they haven't (laughs) asked me like what I want to spend in retirement or when I want to retire. So how can they tell me how much I should have in retirement savings at age 40 or 50 or 60? I mean, it's just like so out of left field that these calculators want to aggregate these numbers. Even our own 401k plan, every time I log in, it's like... Mm -hmm. You're on track for retirement. I'm like, what am I? How do you know that? (laughs) Yes, I know. Because when uh, new clients will come on board and they'll do just that, they'll say, well, my employer, you know, 401k says I'm on track. So I just want you guys to validate that. And I'm like, okay, well, that's really nice that your employer's plan is telling you that. But those, those tacos are getting better, but they're not quite there yet. Um, the least they ask, you know, do you have other assets? You know, that's nice. Um, I haven't seen one yet to ask about pensions or anything like that, but I'm sure they exist somewhere. But yeah, I mean, I, it, that's better than nothing because some people, ma- majority of people do no financial planning whatsoever. So, so that, you know, for most people, they log in and they say, you're not on track for retirement. That's what it's going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Only if they come here or, or where they even have, probably have a chance of being on track for retirement. Right. Uh, meaning that, you know, it's kind of like that. Um, uh, there was that that whole study done. It's called Freakonomics. This came out a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And there's a book. There's even a, a short movie about it. You'll probably find that on Netflix. But um, it said, if does reading a parenting book make you a better parent? And so they did this long study, and basically um, the answer is no. It's the fact that you wanted to read a parenting book that made you a better parent, not oh, the fact that you read, read a it. parenting book. The intent. <laughs> it's, it's, right. it's all about intent. It's, it was the intent. <laughs> the heart behind it. <laughs> and then they went to uh, some underprivileged neighborhoods and found people with um, like just crazy names. Like, you know, my, wife, know. my wife's a school teacher. There, there, there was a, a no joke. There's a kid in the class one time named Shahid. Spelled S H I T H E A D. Oh <laughs> my! <laughs> right. Uh-huh. So they did this whole study of of does your name help you with your place in life in the future? And so then they go into the future and they find people with names like that. And really, there is actually no correlation between your name and success. <laughs> <laughs> which I have a really hard time believing that. But again, these it, it, basically it's an economist and a psychologist, psychological person, a uh, psychologist that got, they got paired together to did, did, did this book. That's um, good. <laughs> I am chuckling inside because I once had a client tell me that my name sounded like a stripper name. Oh, geez. <laughs> what? Missy Beach. 
<laughs> oh my god! So I'm glad there's no correlation. Yes, and I can still yeah. continue um, financial I, advising. Yeah, I never would have. Never, Beach. I never would have put that yes. together. Okay. I never would have either. I, I would ask more questions about their background after that comment. <laughs> it's okay. They were a good client. <laughs> um, but anyway, so so there's really not a way that you can tell the masses, um, you know, this is how much you need to have for retirement. But there are ways that we can help you figure that out on your own um, that makes it make it a little more personable. And the first place you always start is where your expenses, right? <laughs> so how much is it going to cost you to live in retirement, right? So it helps answer the question of how much will you need to have saved for retirement will be based on how much you need to have um, in expenses. Right. Right. And, and, then, and, and then it goes, then it goes back behind that. <laughs> how much you need in expenses can be greatly manipulated depending on how much time you have left prior to retirement. So, you know, I would like to think that most people would want to have a lots of discretionary income in retirement, but that's not how people save. People save or people don't save. Um, people get take on, carry a lot of debt just as, just as Americans, we carry a lot of debt. So we carry that into retirement thinking that's going to be okay. Or, Five years prior to retirement, we realized that's not okay. and We got to get rid of some of this debt. If we had done that two decades prior, then think about the wealth they could have, people could have amassed, right? So I look at it this way is you have to start with their basic principles. One, um, you've got to um, eliminate stupid debt. <laughs> Cash flow freedom. That's- right. So what do, we, what do we call stupid debt? I mean, what's stupid debt? What, 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 what Credit do we see? cards? Yes. Amex at 25% to get um, airline points. Oh, yeah. we saw a 29. <laughs> we did see they're up to 29, 29 now. This yeah. week, yep. For the Amex specifically. So 29%. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Just buy your airplane ticket. I know. Yes. That, that's what I was think, just thinking. Because otherwise, whatever you, you probably put buy on a card, first class ticket anywhere in the U.S. With all the interest you've yes. paid. Absolutely. Oh. That's insane. Um, stupid all right, so debt. Yeah. No stupid debt. Eliminate that, um, you know, and really, cars, car debt really needs to go away. Yeah, we're Definitely. seeing Especially a now. lot these days. Yes. Well, cars got so expensive, but the problem is, even for new cars, unless you find a promotion, you're still paying four and a half percent for a new car. Used car could be as high as seven and a quarter, seven and a half percent. If you have a credit blemish, I'm sure it goes higher than that. We don't see that a whole lot, but no. Um, yeah, fortunately our clients tend to have really good credit, but you're right. But people are financing cars at like tremendous rates that we've never seen before. And so I'm trying to get across to all our wiser clients is, okay, let's end the cycle of the car financing. Like let this one be your last one when it's paid off and then build up the cash savings to purchase the next one because, You've got to get out of the cycle. It, it's harder to take a car longer when you see everyone else has new cars. You know, it's it's harder. You have to live. You have to live your life in your lane and do things a little differently. Was it Dave says? Um, live like no one else today, so you can live like no one else tomorrow. Mm, I yes. like that, and that that's very true. Sometimes, um, even even for wealthy families, you know, there's there's they're very wealthy families. I would say. Um, you just have to make better choices with. But I feel money. like clients now are mentioning how, you know, they see other people that are wealthy that drive their cars till the wheels fall off. And sure. they've heard me mention on our podcast before how my car's 20 years old. <laughs> and they're like, right. what do you drive, Missy? And so I think there's an awareness out there when they can latch on to like, oh, it's okay if someone else is doing it. It, you, because there must be something right behind that. Right. If there's like a quote normal person doing it and it yep. works for them and it's not out of necessity necessarily, like sure, all of our wiser clients could go out and buy like a nice, you know, shiny new car, but you don't have to. Because right. you've got your eye on the long-term prize of retirement, and we've built that into the plan. The uh, As far as mortgages goes, we, we'd like to see those 
eliminated prior to retirement. Um, we actually have a mortgage payoff calculator that's on our website. We can link that in our show notes uh, for you. And you can put in what you're currently paying, what you owe, your interest rate. And then, hey, if I send extra amount to the mortgage, how much interest am I saving? And when you do that, um, it, it, people are amazed how much interest they're saving. And in fact, we're starting to see some people who have moved into the area who've just found us and they have these uh, five to six and a half percent 30 year mortgages. And when you, and when you send in just an extra $500 a month, it saves a ton of money. It does. We had one come in the other day and one of our clients, it was like, if they put, I think it was right at $500 additional a month, they would save over $150,000 on their mortgage um, and interest savings alone. And so it's really incredible to see how 500 can be a lot out of your, you know, monthly expenses, but at the same time, 150,000 is a lot yeah. more to have towards building your own wealth. Absolutely. But, That's less money out of the banker's pocket. Exactly. <laughs> or but more money out of the banker's pocket. And a good less money out of um, exercise, even clients with the really low mortgage rates, you know, 2.875, mm-hmm. 3% the interest savings is still really significant over a 30-year loan if they're going to pay it down early. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I would encourage clients to go online and just check out that mortgage calculator if they haven't been in to see us in a while. Because, you know, if you're going to save fifty grand over the life of a mortgage, that's fifty grand in your pocket and not the mortgage company's pocket. So, exactly. And... Cash flow freedom. There we go again. The big thing for me is making sure that the payoff date in that calculator is less than or equal to your retirement date. Yes. That's the important part. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can't get there, then if you have um, enough saved for retirement, we can build up into the plan. We look at the amortization schedule. We build into the plan a payoff at at um, at retirement, and we do the ca- tax you know, calculations for that. Sometimes it's better wait till the following year, but, but that's important. So we say all this, we spent 10 minutes talking about paying off debt (laughs) (laughs) because if you, it's retirement's about cash flow, right? It has less to do about rate of return and more about free cash flow. Mm -hmm. So the way to free up cash flow is to have less going out and more coming in. And you do that by having less payments. So if you don't have payments, you can live on less. You, know, you wonder how do people live on thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year in retirement? It's very possible when there's no money going out. Oh, exactly. Right, yeah. you pay your utilities and you're done. Right, exactly. Um, so that that's how that's possible. Uh, but you know, we we work with clients with all different spectrums. We 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 have clients at two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. If it was if they had income less than that, they would panic. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have clients at the forty thousand, fifty thousand, sixty thousand dollar level that are as happy as can be doing Have everything, everything they, want, they to do. want to. Yes. <laughs> yes. I know. So it's, it, again, that's why it's all variable on how much you need for retirement. So you've got that. Um, I, I have to throw in emergency reserves. Mm-hmm. Even in retirement, you, you got to have probably about two years worth of expenses in some type of a cash account. We do that automatically for our clients that we're managing assets for. They always have two years worth of expenses inside their portfolio as a buffer for bad market years. So we don't have to liquidate out of fear, right? Yes. And I think that makes clients rest so easy and just gives them that peace of mind that they're not the ones having to control like when to take money out. And they know that we are managing that portfolio and there's always going to be cash to send out to them. And we are not selling when they're portfolios at the very bottom of the market and cash just magically appears just like a paycheck. So Missy um, and Michaela, you guys both do um, the bulk of the financial planning here right now. And you use uh, some software. It's called money guide pro. You guys are very good at, at manipulating that software to get the best outcomes for clients the software is looking at a thousand stock and bond market scenarios is taking into account inflation for healthcare inflation for um, living expenses, which are two different rates. It's taking into account uh, market volatility. You simulate uh, the great financial crisis happening all over again during a client's retirement years. Uh, and in the end, 
we know that we have a 100% chance of not running out of money before typically age 95. Even if there's a great financial crisis, again, um, you know we have a 100% chance of getting through that crisis without a client having to change their lifestyle. Um, we have our own custom portfolios that we put into the modeling software. So we know exactly it's apples and apples. It's not uh, theoretical. It's real portfolios that we're building inside there, right? And then that's executed. Brad takes care of that on the planning side. So it's all this checks and balances and conservative uh, analytics. It goes into all this. It's a software program we pay a lot of money for. Um, in the end, uh, that's great. But if we're going to do this by hand, hmm. <laughs> we're riding in the shuttle and the, sh- and the riding in a rocket and the computer shut out and we have to do manual math. <laughs> oh, no. How would, how would we do this? How, how do we actually tell our listeners, this is how you calculate how much you need for retirement. So let's, right. So okay. we, so let's go through this. What's, what's our, what's our first step? First, I think is figuring out your expenses, like we just talked about, yep. um, and then really taking a holistic view of your expenses, of figuring out, okay, how much are we really going to spend on eating out, dining out, travel, okay. and retirement. So I got I got my expense number. So let, let's, uh, uh, you guys love it when I do this, right? Um, somebody toss me a pen, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have to use a computer as a calculator because I don't. Thank you. Uh, I, producer, producer Ken, there. You said you were doing it all by hand. I am doing it by hand. I'm doing it right you here on a piece of paper. Division. Oh, I'm not doing long <laughs> division. Too old for that. <laughs> to an extent, <laughs> by hand. I just want my Mac to give me a calculator, which okay. uh, it's got to be in here somewhere. Um, all right, so all right. we know our expenses. So let's make up a number. What's a good uh, average American household expense? For retirement? For retirement, yeah. Five grand? Six grand? Okay, per month? Yeah, so yes. we'll call it 60000 60000 per year. Per year. And this is going to be all after taxes, right? Right. Because yes. we, we always do our planning after tax, and then we we our software will figure out <laughs> the tax liability. We're not going to, we're going to take into account taxes today. We don't want to get into that. Um, although, actually, that would be pretty simple. Um, but anyway. Okay, so... We need sixty thousand dollars a year, and are we married? Is this a married couple? Yes. yes. Yes, we're married. So we have two. We have husband. We have wife. And so, what's the next thing? Figure out uh, their income sources. There we go. So let's say they um, uh, they worked. They sit and then and they're they're going to save money into a four hundred one k. So we don't have pensions, but we have Social Security. Mm-hmm. So let's say they make maybe a um, hundred or two hundred, hundred thousand each is what they're making now. Sounds so good. Social Security on making a hundred thousand dollars each. Uh, this is just a swag at this point, but probably around twenty five hundred a month, sure. wouldn't you say, in today's dollars? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So twenty five hundred a month. I do that times um, 12. I think you guys got a little too low on the uh, expenses. <laughs> on the expenses yeah. is what I Let's think. Let's go to 80 grand for our expenses. All right, so 80,000 a year in expenses. That makes more sense. If they're making 200 today. So, yeah, that would be less. See, that that's where the calculators go are crazy because they're like, oh, you can live on 75% of your income. And I, I've never actually really seen that. Uh, without a pension in the background. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Or a business being sold. Um, okay, so we have basically, um, if we go to 80000 a year, uh, that is equivalent to 6000 That's a terrible number. <laughs> $6,666 a month. And we need to make $80,001 a year. Um, or spend... Uh, and then we have five thousand dollars a month that we're pulling out from, um, or we have in Social Security, mm-hmm. right? So that's about one thousand six hundred and sixty-six dollars a month that we have in a deficit right now. Mm-hmm. 
So 16, let's call it 17, 1700 a month <laughs> times 12. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm analyzing all these numbers. That's about $20,400 a year. Now let's, let's talk about this rule. This is the 4% rule, hmm. right? So mm -hmm. the 4% rule is when you retire, you can pull out 4% per year and then you increase that each year by the rate of inflation so that you'd never actually run out of run out of money. It does spin down. The 4% right. rule does spin down. It doesn't protect principal, but it will spin down. Which is a good rule of thumb, but in most plans, it's not going to be a steady 4%. Correct. Like you're going to retire early in many cases, so you're going to have a huge percentage in the early retirement years, yeah. and then hopefully it, it becomes, drops. It yeah. drops lower, yeah. But then this is rough math calculation. Back this of the is, envelope. This is not um, what it what our software would generate necessarily. So if we have twenty thousand four hundred dollars a year in need, but we apply the that we 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 would withdraw four percent per year. Mm -hmm. Again, we still have to gross up for inflation. We have to gross up for taxes, mm -hmm. right? But twenty thousand four hundred a year. You divide that by four um, four percent. So that gives you $510,000. You'd have to have a portfolio of $510,000 in addition to your social security to, to live on $80,000 a year. Yeah. That right? makes sense. So that's, that gives you a rough number. Now your 80,000 is on increase at 2.5% per year, right? Your living expense. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the inflation number I would use because the fed target rates 2%. I mean, inflation over the last year has now dropped to 4%. So we're getting closer to that target rate. Um, and then at 80000 a year living in Georgia at age 65, you wouldn't be paying income tax. Uh, after your standard deduction of roughly 24000 you pay very little fed, mm -hmm. federal tax. So that's not a huge, that's not a huge tax liability. Um so if you gross up a little bit, maybe it's closer to 600000 is what you would need, but you're in that ballpark. So there you go. Take what your guaranteed income is, subtract that from what your income need is, uh, take your, um, or from your expenses, sorry, and then take your uh, the, the gap, multiply it times 12, do that, divide that number by 4%. Mm -hmm. That's a really good start. Exactly. That's so much better than any online calculator. And I feel like that's even a shocking number for a lot of people because um, they actually, I just saw a study that was done the other day that most Americans actually believe that in order to be ready for retirement or um, to have enough money in the bank to be considered rich would be 2.2 million. And so um, really having even to do the calculation and realize that, oh, 500,000 if you're retiring at full retirement age um, to be able to have your social security already really is a fairly achievable number for yeah. most people. Now, if you retire prior to full, full social security age, then all this changes. So this is probably assuming you're taking social security at 67. Right. So you retire at 67 immediately take social security. There is a path that you could retire sooner, but you need a higher number, you need more than 510,000. You're going to need a bigger number because you won't, you shouldn't be taking social security early really you should be delaying till 70 if you can exactly. and that's where the financial planning software will look at this it'll look at all the income possibilities and come up with a more straight line process for you so you could retire sooner you spend down your own assets longer until you get to age 70 take the maximum social security you don't touch the portfolio for another decade it grows more right mm -hmm. and then in older age you would have to start taking it again because of inflation but that, that's where advanced planning tools come in and the benefit of working with financial planners versus um, a computer model, right? Definitely. Exactly. Yeah, we had um, a client couple just yesterday where um, they wanted to retire early. And so they had a big portfolio withdraw or drawdown between early retirement and Social Security where it was a deficit, but then once Social Security hit, their um, retirement spending was minimal, so they actually went into a surplus mm. for many years until inflation caught up with them again, and they lost purchasing power. 
Right. Yeah, that's the thing too. I think it's really easy to do, you know, back of the napkin math and retire tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to stay retired a decade later yeah. yes. with inflation rates, especially now. But mm-hmm, even exactly. when they were just two percent or one percent or manufactured by the government for a whole decade, it was still hard to be retired ten years later. But especially in this environment that we're in right now. Oh, yeah. And I think that's the value of updating the plan every year. You can see where, you know, that past year has gotten you. And, you know, are you still on track? Is that same level of spending still going to give you the same probability of success? And do you want to adjust it, you know? So that's the key of having that living plan versus just a Okay, well, Casey said I could spend eighty grand for the rest of my life. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So again, this is just a theoretical, made up, uh, made. We even talked about this before we <laughs> we started recording this. So um, don't beat us up on how can people who are making two hundred thousand live on eighty, right? Don't yeah, beat us up yes. on that. But that, that's that's um, uh, something that something to think about. I will say that that. There are family, we work a lot of families that have really high income, but their expenses are so low mm-hmm. that when they get to retirement, it, it doesn't even really phase them. Because if, you, if you're making, you know, three, four, five, eight hundred thousand dollars a year, there's so much being paid in tax that you won't pay. Mm-hmm. There's there's so much uh, uh, even in debt that you wouldn't be paying anymore. Just think about um, medical costs sometimes come way down in retirement for oh, more gosh. wealthy families. Yep. Uh, you also have... Um, uh, all those uh, 401k contributions that are no longer being contributed to or deferred comp plans that you're no longer c- contributing to. So when you really look at your net paycheck, yeah, mm-hmm. how exactly. much is really hitting your pocket in the end? And that's, that's if you compare it to that number, you're really not that far off on, I, on take-home pay. And definitely, I think that is one of the more difficult questions for clients when they come in is asking them what they expect to spend in retirement because they only know their current situation and it's so hard to step outside of, oh, well, yeah, I make this amount, so I need this amount. But it's like, oh, well, actually, when I take out the maximum contribution that I'm doing to my 401k and I right. take out, you know, the mortgage that I'll have paid off and all of that, it ends up that they're like, we could live on like two grand. And you're like, okay, maybe well, not, not that, not low. that yeah, low. Don't that do that. Low. <laughs> because... <laughs> You do want to leave your house. Exactly. (laughs) Right. Um, But anyway, hopefully that helps people kind of, you know, calculate that that's a real process to calculate something versus what you see online. Ultimately, um, either hiring us to do financial planning and and retirement portfolio management, or even just hiring us by the hour to do these calculations uh, for you using our, our software. Um, That's, that's the better approach. Uh, if you don't use us, then I always say find a fiduciary fee only, not fee based, but fee only oh, planner somewhere um, that can help you do these um, do these calculations. U- ultimately, I think that um, you know we've we've never had a situation where um, the math was wrong. A lot of times, uh, people just don't know how to stop spending money, and, that, and that's a whole different that's a whole different discussion. Um, we want to use very conservative numbers where you go online. I think Missy, you were talking about this, um, earlier before we got started, you go online and it allows people to put in their own rate of return. And so people are putting in like seven, eight percent. We're in retirement. We're using numbers like less of, uh, less of 3%. Yeah. A total return after inflation. Mm-hmm. Um, so you want to use really conservative numbers when you're doing this type of planning, um, because you know, there was a lost decade not that long ago, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, uh, 2000 to 2010 was, was a flat rate of return, um, for the S and P 500. So you want to be prepared for that. And the best way to do it is to plan for the worst case scenario. The good news is, is when we have outsized returns, like for example, we have clients that, uh, recently had wanted to buy a car, but because they had lived below the plan mm-hmm. and then the plan so conservative, we're able to pay cash for a car. Yep. Right. Because they're, they, they have like a 99% chance of not running out of money before a <laughs> hundred. Yeah. And so wow. there's excess, there's excess cash in there in the plan to, to be able to pull out and it works. Okay. 
Yeah, so at those meetings, it's great to be able to deliver good news like that. So, okay, when we did this update, wow, your probability of success has skyrocketed because of market outperformance. So this is the time. Right. Take some of that off the table. Go buy your car for cash. And then, and then it also um, gives you very good peace of mind when you have like a 2022 yeah. And then the plan doesn't change. The plan already taken mm-hmm. that into account. In fact, it was better than the financial crisis. Yeah, <laughs> 2022 <exactly>. was, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the pro- probability of success may drop slightly, maybe a couple of percentage points, but in the end, um, you're still doing just fine. And, and that, uh, that allows me to sleep at night. Um, cause I can't imagine being a firm that just does a- asset management with no financial planning, no real planning mm-hmm. attached. Yeah. Um, planning, you'd have to have portfolio conversations every time you talk to somebody and you can't control the markets. Nobody can. No. So you, so you have to put all your, your, um, calculations into the planning side. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, 2022, it was no one's fault. The market was just down universally across the board. So that's just a fact of life. You know what looks really good is 10 years ago. Yeah. Meaning, if you look back at your portfolio over the last 10 years, it has been a great decade. Great Absolutely. decade. And mm-hmm. it was not in a straight up line. Mm-mm. There was some nasty stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> that mm-hmm. happened over the last 10 years. <laughs> but for a patient investor, you have, you have a very high rate of return. That's what you have to focus on mm-hmm. over the long term. So we have uh, other um, podcasts where we talk about this. How much can you spend in retirement? Episode 158 is a good one to listen to. Uh, episode 115, I, I don't like this title as much, but what could happen if you don't prepare for retirement? Bad um, stuff. Yeah, bad, <laughs> bad stuff. Bad juju. Um, we also have a, a, a Wiser Retirement YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch us. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can watch us live on the, uh, on the video as we record the podcast. Uh, and also... Um, we have extras that we put in there with Missy, Michaela, Brad, and myself. Uh, how much is enough to retire is a video that will be linked in our show notes. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening to uh, today's episode. If you're interested in learning more about Wiser Wealth Management or want to schedule a consultation to meet with one of our fiduciary financial advisors like Missy, Michaela, um, you can do so by going to wiserinvestor.com or you can click on the link in our episode notes. Thanks for your time today, guys. All right. Thanks, See you soon. Casey. Thanks for listening to a Wiser Retirement Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening. That way you don't miss any new episodes. We'd also appreciate if you could leave a rating and review. If you have any questions about anything that was discussed today, head to wiserinvestor.com and reach out. This episode was produced and edited by Ken Hoadley. This podcast is strictly for informational purposes only and is not to be considered as investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any financial products, securities, digital assets, or any other investment vehicles or a basis to make any financial decisions. Wiser Wealth Management Incorporated is a registered investment advisor with the SEC. The host and or guest may personally own securities, digital assets, or other investment vehicles mentioned on this podcast. Neither the host nor guest of the show are compensated for their participation and no referral fees are paid to or received by any host or guest for clients, listeners, or similar interests. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor, tax professional, insurance professional, and or legal professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.